All right, Shalom. I want to start out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Hara Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to your brothers to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word and truth, love and sincerity, and may blessings fall upon the houses of the one third. Don't be in the days of Noah's spirit, man. Okay? Don't be in the days of Noah's spirit. Okay? Because of the rest of the world, as you can see, they're in the spirit of in the days of Noah, man. You know? Why they're carrying on with the pleasures of this life. Okay? How they're loving everything that's going on. The wickedness. The abomination. Right? The, uh, the idolizing. You know? All these different things. You know? They still continue on in the spirit of as in the, as in the days of Noah, man. You know? Uh, the spirit of lust. The spirit of pride. The spirit of abomination. Okay? And it's for us us brothers, you know, and also you, you different uh, sisters out there too that's following in this truth and in this faith. Hey, we can't be in the days of Noah's spirit, man. You know? And the people that may, you know, uh, you, you want to be around more like-minded people that's, right. that's not in that spirit as well. You know? So... Uh, without further ado, I want to get straight into it. It's the book of Matthew 24, verse 36. It says, but of, the, but of that day and hour, know of no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah were so, so, I'll read it again. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see? So, hey, as the scriptures also say, the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night, man. You know, and what was going on in the days of Noah? Everybody was what? Partying and bullshitting, you know, and, and Noah was out there prophesying, you know, telling them of, of the flood that was going to come, you know. But what happened? They gave Noah a disregard, man. You know, they disregarded everything that he was saying. And then what ended up actually taking place after that? The flood came, man, you see, and took them all away. Saved what? Noah and his household, man. Okay. Noah and his household. You see, the same thing is going to happen today, man, with you people. You see, because y'all disregard the word of Yahweh, Yah Yah, you know, y'all set his counsel at not. And who is the Lord's counsel? His men, his servants, the prophets. Okay? But you disregard it. You see? Why? Because y'all want to continue in that, that, that Noah, that Noah spirit, man. You did, Salakia, in that days of Noah's spirit, Salakia. That's what y'all continuing in, you know? Verse uh, 38, it says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see? So it's letting you know that they were, they were, they was into folly, man. You see? They was into folly. They wasn't paying attention to what was going on. You see? They wasn't being circumspect of uh, of the times, you see. Here it is that <laughs> you know America is in the worst condition that it has ever been in. You know, economy is at its worst. You know, uh, I mean, uh, financially everything. You know, the the the, the cars, uh, the housing market. You know, the the uh, the uh, automobile market. See everything, but people cannot still see. Through the entertainment and the bullshit of what's actually taking place out here, man. You see? With why are they carrying on with their steady, steadily, steadily uh, marrying and drinking and having pleasures of themselves, man. You see? Pleasures of wickedness and pleasures of themselves. Okay? So verse 39 again, it says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see? Same thing's gonna happen, man. You know, so that's why the Lord always tell us, you know, the, uh, you know, watch therefore to see what's coming, you know, uh, and stand upon our watch. I believe it actually says it a little bit in um in this chapter. It's like, let me go right back, Matthew twenty four verse. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's like verse forty two. It says what? Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. 
But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house, house to be broken, house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You see? So, hey, you're supposed to stand upon thy watch. You're supposed to be sober and be diligent, you know? Uh, pay attention to everything around you because you don't know you don't know when your Lord cometh, man. You see, and we know the adversary is what you know seeking, uh, seeking, you know us that what he may devour us. Okay, roughly paraphrasing. Oh, let's get that for the. Let's see. I get it real quick. Uh, First Peter four verse seven it says, "But the end of all these things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer." See, First Peter five verse eight it says, "Be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant." Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about, seeking who he may devour. You see? So you must, what? Be upon your watch. You know, you must be circumspect. You see? Being vigilant, uh, it's like it being, right? Being sober and being vigilant is, is doing what, man? You, you always paying attention of, of different things. You know? Matter of fact, what's that? First uh, Peter 5 and 8. I want to get that word. I'm going to that definition a little bit. First, First Peter five and eight. All right, be sober, be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant. Um. So it says, oh, to watch, to metaphorically give strict attention, to be cautious, active, to take heed, lest through remission and. Uh, Indolence, some destruction, calamity, suddenly overtake overtake one. You see? So it says literally or figuratively be vigilant, wake, and watchful, man. You see? And our people are not what? They're not being uh, watchful, man. Because they don't care of the things that's going on, man. You know? And Jake don't... If, if things does not physically... What's going on? If things don't physically uh, affect Jake, Right? If it's not right at his doorstep, Jake don't care, man. You see, Jake is in this this, this false reality, right? A, a comfortable mindset and a comfortable uh, way of life, man. Thinking that they're gonna be all good, but you're not gonna be all good, man. Okay, we're telling you that destruction is about to come upon this place. You see, that like this place is about to be a nightmare. You see, but you don't want to hearken, you don't want to take heed. But that's all good. You see, because we just doing our job, doing a warning. You see, and getting the blood off her hands, and that's it. Okay? It's the book of Luke 17, verse 26, right? Read it again, it says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and a flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also it was in the days. Likewise, also it was in the days. It's lucky, it's lucky. Likewise, also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is rebuilt. Re rebuilt. You see? So same thing was going on, man. Hey, in the days of Noah, the, the days of Lot. Because what was Lot doing? Lot was telling. Hey, Lot went and told, uh, uh, I believe some of them was like his stepsons. Lot went and go told some of his step stepsons about, you know, how the Lord was about to destroy that place with fire and brimstone. What happened? They disregarded Lot, man. You see? So it was to the point where the angels had to get Lot. Right, basically forced Lot and his daughters to get him up out of there, man. You know, so the Lord can do what he had to do, 
do what had to be done was destroy that place for the wickedness and the abominations that was going on in there in there you see and what was going on they was doing wicked pleasures man wicked a, a wicked lifestyle you see it, it shows you the account when a, a lot was a, a a lot you know had the angels enter into his house you see, they try to sleep with the angels man you see not lot but the people that came to his doorstep and even Lot told them, here, you can take my beautiful daughters. They ain't want the daughters, you see? Okay, they was caught up with the wickedness and the pleasures, you know, uh, 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 of themselves to do a wicked, lustful acts, man. You see? Bunch of wickedness. The same thing that's being done here and being exalted in America, Babylon, the great, man. You see? So we're in the days of Noah. We're in the days of Lot all over again, man. You know? I want to get this. And I'm not going to make this too long. I want to try to make this real quick and sweet. It's the book of James 4 verse 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High, man. And if you uh, carry on and, and if you're exulting and if you're, you know, uh, 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 you know, basically, if you don't have nothing to say about the, the wickedness and the things that's going on of, of this world, man. Hey, you're, you're a partaker in it, man. You know, you are a partaker in it. You see, because you, you, you actually you're actually siding with the wickedness that's going on because you have nothing evil to say. Even though you know that evilness is going on, you know, you have nothing. E you have nothing to say to stand up for righteousness. I'll say that, you know, you, you have you have no uh, righteous no, uh, speakings you know in your mind or that's gonna come out of your tongue right even when you see all the wickedness being done because why you are a partaker in the wickedness and folly of this place man so what you're a friend of the world man meaning what if you're a friend of the world or you have the friendship of the world right you are enmity with the most high man or you're an enemy of the most high you know it's lock here you know But these things got to be mentioned, man. You know? It's the book of Luke 21, verse 34. It says, what? Um, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness. And what? Cares of this life. And so that the day come upon you unawares, man. You see? And if you caught up in all this folly, you see, these every these day, the days, uh, things, this, the day of the Lord is going to come upon you, right, and unawares, man, you see, when you're not paying attention, like most of these people in this world, majority of these people in this world, you see, but this thing is about the elect, okay, and as the scriptures, as I read in the last video I did, you know, Israel, um, Romans 11 and 7, you see, let's get it. Right. What then Israel have not obtained which he seeking for, but the election have obtained it and arrest or blinded, man. So these people are blinded, man. You see? And you have so many different things out here that's blinding these people. And, and, and that's, you know, a, a snare and a stumbling block to them. You know, it, it, it's crazy. You know, so that's why we got to pray to Yahweh and, Shemel Shai and, and uh, uh, praise Yahweh Shemel Shai that he have opened our eyes up, man. That he have opened our minds, you know. To not be seared with a hot iron of, of this madness that's going on out here in this world, man. You know? So I want to read this again and we can close out the book of Luke 21 verse 34. It says, what? And take heed to yourselves, lest at, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with what? Suffering, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And so that the day come upon you unawares. I want to go into this word of uh, suffering. It says, uh, the, the giddiness and headache caused by drinking wine to access. So we, we know what drunk is, drunkenness means. So that's, you know, uh, what? You know, uh, basically being merry, being joyful all the time, you know, partying, you know, and rioting. Rioting is like, you know, going out and, and clubbing and things like that. You know, you know, you don't want to be in, in that spirit. Okay. And, and I say the best example, and this, <laughs> hey, this is from uh, my personal experience, a hey, Hey, brothers, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just best if you drink at home, man. You know, too much folly be going on out here in this world, man. It's just best 
They drink at home, you know? You know? So, hey, Lord willing, hey, you can't get caught up in this world, man, in the madness of this world and the pleasures of this life, man. See, because all, all, all this is just a facade and all this is temporary and all this wickedness and madness is about to come to the end. Okay? So, hey, Lord willing, with that, until next time, I want to show you Shalom. I hope this doesn't